Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. Uh, this tutorial is an introduction to polymorphism. I'm going to open up my web browser to my website, javacjava.com. I'm going to select Menu and Java OOP Tutorials. I'm going to scroll down here to the Polymorphism to Introduction. What is polymorphism? Hearing this term for the first time may invoke thoughts of some sort of super complicated alien shapeling technology from a Star Trek episode. Now, in reality, is a, it is a fairly simple concept as long as lingo like, you know, one interface, many types, blah, 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 is not used to define it. Now, take a minute to think about your family members. How are you related to your biological cousins? Well, for one, you and your cousins both have at least one biologic grandparent in common. You and your cousins both have certain traits that have been genetically passed down from that grandparent. You inherit biological characteristics from your biological ancestors. Things like your eye color or hair color are examples of inherited characteristics. Without going into great detail about dominant and recessive genes, considering the, consider the following example. Suppose both of your grandparents had blue eyes. Then your mom inherited the recessive blue eye gene and has blue eyes as well. Suppose your father has brown eyes. Well then there is a high probability that his dominant brown eye genes will overwrite the recessive blue eye gene, and that you will have brown eyes. Now, your aunt or uncle would have blue eyes as well, you know, if they're coming from your mom's side, I should say. Your cousins will inherit their eyes, their eye colors in part from your grandparents' genes, but also from the other family tree involved as well. Now, if we blow up this example to all of humanity, then we end up with an interesting finding. You know, we all have eye color. That's just straightforward. Now, and there is only about six overrides of that that apply to that eye color, like uh, brown color, blue color, green color, hazel color, you know, so on and so forth there. Now, let's get back to the wonderful world of object-oriented programming, Java OOP. Let's say we have a class called car that contains a method called average price. Suppose class Honda Accord extends car then Honda Accord will inherit all the accessible members from the car class. Now suppose that Toyota Prius extends car, and then the Toyota Prius, eh, I got a misspelling there, Toyota Prius will also inherit all accessible members from the car class. We can say with 100% certainty that both the Honda Accord and the Toyota Prius have the average price method. The best way to show you what we can do with this is to present you with a code example. So let's come down here to the source code and let's highlight it all. Control C to copy or right click and select copy. I'm going to move my browser off screen. Come back here. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one by right clicking, selecting new shortcut, CMD, next and finish. Okay, let's go ahead and open that up. Type in Java C, which is a Java compiler command, then press enter. You should see all this stuff scroll by. If you get an error message, watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You wanna make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, CD space backslash. CD is short for change directory, and backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm gonna make a directory called Java using the MD command. Now I already have it, but if you don't, um, it'll go ahead and create it for you. Change directories to the Java folder. And I'm gonna make a directory here, and I'm gonna call it uh, Poly intro. Change directory to the poly intro folder. Notepad poly intro dot Java. Okay, let's paste all this stuff in here. Don't worry about all this stuff that's commented out down here. I'll get to it all in due time. So let's come up here and save this. So here's our class car, right? And it has this very simple average price method, void return type executes this one statement here, which will use the print line method to display this string literal. The average price of a new car is 28,400 to the console. Class Honda Accord extends car, so it'll inherit this method, which is the only member of the car class, right? As if it was right down here inside of it. Whoops. Okay. Right, as if it was right there inside of it. That's what extending it'll do, basically. 
right? Um, and then Toyota Prius also extends car as well, so it will also inherit average price. So let's come back up here to the main method inside of the polyentro class. The first statement, car C equals new car. So I've got this variable reference variable C of car type, setting that equal to the reference of a new car object. Um, HA reference variable of Honda Accord type, setting that equal to a new Honda Accord object. TP reference variable of Toyota Prius type, setting that equal to a new object, instant, or reference to a new instance of Toyota Prius, or a new op to Toyota Prius object. Okay, now before we go on to the other statements here, I've got the static void display average. So the display average method takes a parameter here called car. Now you notice no return type and static, it just means that I can, you know, call it from within another static method here is the only reason I made it that way. So, now pay special attention to this. This is a car type parameter, right? Um, and then it will just basically use that, that um, car type parameter, right? And this is a reference variable, by the way, parameter variable, and that will invoke the dot average price. Okay, so you can see, uh, first thing I'm doing up here is calling the display average, right? And, and I'm passing it the C reference variable, then the HA reference variable, and the TP reference variable. So let's go ahead and save this, and let's clear our screen, type in Java C, Compile the poly intro, then Java to invoke the verb. Let's see, Java poly intro to invoke the poly intro class from the Java virtual machine. And we get that string literal displayed three times. You might be going, oh, okay, well, that's pretty unimpressive. Okay, but you can remember that, uh, that feeling you got right now going, whoop de doo, what's the big deal? And see if you feel that way in about four or five minutes here. So let's go ahead and override this average price here in the Honda Accord to begin with here. All right. A simple override here of the average price and it will display to the console the average price of a new Honda Accord is 26,007. Okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it. Compile it and run it actually. Let's clear our screen. And we get the average price of a new car is 28,400. The average price of a new Honda Accord is 26,007. And the average price of a new car is 28,004. All right, now you might be thinking, based on this parameter here, right, of car type reference variable parameter, just invoking the average price method. Okay, isn't that kind of cool? It, um, basically what happened is it, it um, you gotta think of the reference variable relationship with the actual object, right? The actual object here in, in C reference variable is a car object, right? We're passing the reference variable and that reference variable refers to this car object here. When this car type parameter comes over, param basically just is, a, is like a, a pass, job is a pass, pass by value, um, so it just has C has the same value, reference value, pointing to this same car object up, type here, up top here. So it knows to just go ahead and invoke the average price method from within the car object. Now the Honda Accord, right, its reference variable is pointing to a Honda Accord type object out here in the heat memory. When we pass HA, which is the reference variable in there, it is a, um, it's a subclass of, of car. Right, so we, we have inherited all of the methods from the car here, and as a matter of fact, we overrode it here. So this is perfectly valid. This reference variable param will know to invoke the average price method based on the object. This is a Honda Accord object, so it comes down here and says, oh, okay, let's invoke this one here. Okay, and now let's go ahead and override the Toyota Prius version here of the average price. And let's go ahead and save this. Okay, so there we go. Now we got three different uh, things displayed to the console. New car, 28,400 Honda Accord, 26,007. Toyota Prius, 23,450. All right, so that's basically the way that works there. Now one other thing that I wanna do to show you this here is that 
if we do that, right, which was what was essentially going on in here, right, we can go ahead and declare these as car type reference variables and set them equal to like a new Honda Accord object, right? Let's come up here and let's save this. And so you might be going, what? That, that's interesting. And that's one of the cool things about polymorphism is that um, it can basically, all of this, it knows that there is an average price because we extended car here, we know with 100% certainty that Toyota and Honda Accord have an average price method. So there's absolutely no way we're gonna get any errors or any failures of any sort by invoking the average price method on a car type reference variable, right? And the beauty of Java is, is it knows which one to do based on the, based on the actual object, right? Okay. So let's go ahead and save this and run this here. Okay, see, there we go. New car, Honda Accord, Toyota Prius, right? And if I did something uh, like car, um, blah, equals new Honda Accord, right? Can already tell you you already know what this is going to display to the console again right we're going to get another honda cord display down at the very bottom of this even though this is a car type here right so let's go ahead and save this let's clear our screen oh help if i compiled it uh, what did i do oh you know it would really help if i didn't have a typo in there. Okay, new Honda Accord. Save. Let's clear our screen. Oh, you know what? Nothing's going to happen unless I invoke the proper method there, right? Blah. There we go. If I could get with it today, man, Dan, I'll tell you what. Hmm. Okay, now, third time's the charm here. The average price, so we got the uh, new Honda Accord down here, okay? So that's kind of the beauty of, of polymorphism here is that, uh, you know, we can do stuff like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just save this out, uh, clear the screen, compile it again, run it again, and that's what we get there, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this, get rid of that, and leave you with uh, just a couple final thoughts there. So this tutorial serves as an introduction to the concept of polymorphism. Stay tuned for my next few tutorials, which will introduce you to more ways to integrate polymorphism and certain rules that apply to it as well. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.